Hi guys, this is Christine, your Relationship and Mindset Master Doctor and your Leverage for Change. Today I want to speak about uh, emotional abuse and later on in the video, towards the very end actually, I will be speaking about the attachment styles and how they show up with uh, emotional abuse, which styles are more likely to be the victim and the other ones and, the, and which one would be more likely to be the perpetrator of emotional abuse. So what exactly is um, emotional abuse? Emotional abuse, as according to the DSM, is a pattern of behavior where someone repeatedly and deliberately harms another's mental health and overall well-being through non-physical acts. So these are non-physical acts, right? And the problem with non-physical acts is that we can't see them so much, right? We don't see the result of what, you know, like we, we have physical abuse. You can see the result of that. You will see people getting bruised and battered and all kind of, um, you know, uh, physical uh, evidence of that, uh, that abuse. But with the emotional abuse, you don't normally see the evidence of emotional abuse. And um, the victims of emotional abuse can usually hide this, uh, the evidence so much because, because they can also put on this facade that everything is uh, fine, everything is well, and they will go on with life without people ever knowing that they're emo emotionally abused. Now, especially when it's perpetuated in, um, in, you, in the adults, uh, as you, when you're an adult, um, Adults have learned to just hide so many things, all different types of abuse. They could be going through hell and they will smile and say, I'm fine. You know, we all learn to do that because we just don't want to tell everybody our business, right? But with um, with physical abuse is right there, right out in your face. People can see it and know that something is not right, all right? So now, why would someone do this? Why does someone do this? It's usually, guys, it's a learned behavior from childhood. As I mentioned um, in some of my videos, uh, some households, uh, when a child is growing up, is quite turbulent. And there can be a lot of emotional abuse, it can be physical abuse, and so many other different types of abuse, sexual and uh, emotional. And so this type of abuse, if it's something that a child had to live with, uh, you know, in, in their early years, especially from birth to two, three growing up, um, this is, <clears throat> this has become the norm in their environment, right? And um, as they grow older, if it, this is continued, also it becomes something that they now um, do it to others. They do it to others, right? Because uh, a lot of times, you know, the people who are doing it to them as they, when they were children, they did not have any any power over these people, you know, these people were feeding them, clothing them, or whatever it is that they, you know, there was a roof over their head, and they couldn't do anything about it, so they just accepted it. They could not fight against it. And so what a lot of them do is now turn around and do it to somebody else, you know, and usually, especially in close relationships, like intimate relationships, or sometimes going further when they have children, they'll do it to their children. So it's perpetuated and just continued down in, you know, each each level of their family um, unit. So now, why they do it? As I said before, they learned it from childhood, and and, and they didn't have any power to you know uh, refute all of those things that were they were told. So they accepted it to be true about them. Now this, of course, uh, causes a very low feelings of low self worth and self image and self esteem and all of that mess. You feel less than, and so to make yourself feel better, to make yourself feel better, what they do is um, they now perpetuate that same behavior on somebody else so they can feel better, all right? Uh, let's see, it's um, a lot of times, guys, um, the, the person who was a victim, when the child who now does this, grown up to, grows up to be an adult and does this to their partner or their children, they have hid this, some of the painful ones, especially the ones that were too painful for them to acknowledge, they have buried it so deeply that sometimes they don't even know why they do what they do. And um, until they get help to unearth these feelings, right? 
then they are not able to deal with it and heal from it. So they continue to perpetuate it um, into their relationships, like their intimate relationships with their wives, their spouses, or their um, girlfriends. Or if they have children, they do the same thing with their children. Now, um, as I said before, you know, because of this feeling, the emotional abuse really makes um, people feel as if they are not worthy like they're less than they're they're um they grew up with low self-image and feelings of low self-worth why is it so difficult to spot well there are no physical scars you know but the scars are definitely there guys the scars as a matter of fact it's been um found that the emotional scars can be even more um dangerous than the physical stars not condoning physical abuse not condoning that but the emotional scars, um, it's, it's, it's always there. It lives in your subconscious. And so you now start acting from that belief system that those things were told to you, made you believe about yourself, right? A lot of people though, I've seen, I've seen exceptions of people who, when they're told, for example, that uh, you will amount to nothing, or you're just like your dad, or you're you know you're just gonna be a drunk, just like your dad, or worthless, whatever it is, or, or whatever it is, like your mom, what you know, whatever it is. They people tell their kids these things, so they tell them that, and then some child, for whatever reason, and um, that's a totally different um, video. They choose to use that criticism and emotional abuse to be the opposite of what they're being told so you know it that takes a lot of strength and um uh, fortitude especially i believe that you know at least as an adult they've come to realize that no what they're saying about me is not true what they said about me is not true i that is not who i am and they choose to be who you know the better part of who they want to be all right so what kind of behaviors can you expect from someone who um, is emotionally abusing you. Well, they have this passive aggressive, there's this thing, passive aggressive behavior where they use little quips and little digs. You know, they'll say little things like, what is that you're wearing? And if you kind of start now wondering, what do you mean? What is that I'm wearing? You know, whatever it is. They will say, oh, you're too, you're too, you're too sensitive or you're too whatever it might be to make you feel as if you're the one to blame. You're too sensitive. There's something wrong with you, not what with, with how, what they said about you, right? Um, they will also do, they'll t say you can't take a joke, stuff like that. I'm sure you guys have heard this before because I have heard it and, 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 and wonder about, you know, I, I've had these experiences. Um, then another thing they, may, they do is um, to gaslight you, this popular word now, gaslighting. They'll say things to make you second guess yourself and to doubt your reality. So they'll say things that you know are not true, but then because they say it and now start to make it make you think that you like, am I really, did I really hear that right? Did I really think that right? Am I really experiencing that right? All kind of stuff. So you question yourself and you start to wonder about if you're actually going crazy, right? Another thing that they do is they ignore your perspective or your opinions, right? So they might some, say something and you might want to say something in response to what they say. And they will just totally like either talk over you or they'll just ignore what you said and just continue with what they have to say, right? They literally pretend they just did not hear what you said um, or they just, you know, don't want to address what you, what, what you said. The other thing they do is they intentionally humiliate you in private and also in public. So the same little quips that they did, you know, before, like, you know, oh, what are you wearing? Why, why do you always do that? Why are you always, whatever it is, right? Or say something that will uh, just kind of shame, you know, shame you and humiliate you in front of other people. It could be total strangers, it could be friends, and they, all, they will also do it in private when you're alone, right? So you can see how this, this kind of behavior in a consistent manner, day in, day out, can make you feel like you're not worthy or like you're like, uh, your self-image is like down into the dirt. You know, this is what they want you to feel because their self-image is also in the dirt and they want you to feel just like they do. 
All right, the next thing they do is to, in, they manipulate you to do what you don't want. And if you don't do it, or if you say you don't want to do it, they guilt trip you or shame you, or sometimes it can go as far as threatening you uh, in front, in private and also in front of others. And, and um, this can actually lead to physical abuse when they start with the threats, okay? The next thing they do is to, if you do something or you don't do something that they want, you do something that they, they, uh, they didn't want you to do or you don't do something that they want you to do, they will ignore you and give you the silent treatment. And, um, you know, they, uh, and then they will, it's a way of guilt tripping you as a way to punish you for not doing what they want you to do. The next thing they do is too that they're overly critical. You know, they will tell you what to wear, how to eat, how to dress, how to walk, where to go, what to do. They're overly critical. They want to dictate your life for you, right? And if you don't, you know, live up to their expectations, they will criticize you. Uh, the next thing they do, it's also a way of intimidating you, is intimidate you on purpose. They do this on purpose. It's not just like, you really can't, I'm not sure you can intimidate uh, someone by accident. But So I think it's, it's, it's on purpose, right? Um, if you don't comply with their demands, just as before, you know, because you fear the consequences of what? Uh, of not um, adhering to their commands. And also, the reason they do it is because it makes them feel everything all of this, it makes them feel power. It's about power over you. It's about power over you because they feel they can make you do anything that they want. The next thing, as I say, they isolate you, which is similar to ignoring you and giving you a silent treatment, right? Because they, but, but this one is a little more, uh, is a little deeper in that when they isolate you, they isolate you from your friends and your family members, those close to you, because they don't want their, your, your friends and family members to pick up on the abuse and say something to you or maybe try and rescue you out of that. So they isolate you. They'll make sure that you don't have any friends, make sure you're, you don't, you're not close to your family. Um, they'll do other things away from you as a couple, but not include your family. Um, and it's a way, it's a, it's a way of, self, of controlling you. It's a way of controlling you. The next thing that they do is to reject you when you don't do what they want, right? Uh, and this rejection can come in the form of physical distance or emotional distance. Um, they are emotionally unavailable to you, even though for the most part they probably were not anyway, but at least they, it's, this is now specific to something that you might have done or something that they believe that you should not have done. And so they will physically distance themselves from you, meaning they will physically leave the building, leave the, or they could be in the room, but they are not even like, it's like you're not even alive. You're not, you're not even there, right? So that's a physical or emotional distancing that they will do. <clears throat> and this will you, and, and it's really a reason to cause you, you know, to start wondering, what did I do wrong? Because sometimes they won't even tell you what you did wrong, right? They will just um, isolate you physically or emotionally. And um, then you start questioning yourself, what did I do wrong for them to start behaving like that? You know, and then it builds this feeling of insecurity, you know, that is, and, and it's all about them controlling you. Everything that someone who's an emotional abuser or a physical abuser, everything they do is about power and control, all right? The next thing they do is um, exploit you in terms of um, they use you. They're only, they only call you or they only want to be around you. Uh, they only um, check up on you when they want you to do something for them, right? If it's something they want from you, they'll call you. But if you don't, they don't need you for anything, you won't hear from them until they want something again, right? So this is exploitation and so it's, it's like, um, it, it, it is very, this is something that they do with people who love to people please, right? Because they feel that doing, and, and who are the people pleasers? The people pleasers are the fearful avoidance. So you can understand that these uh, individuals will get a lot of, um, you know, from, from um, being exploit, exploitation because they want to please others. And so they can fall into this trap 
where others will use them only when they need them. The next thing, basically, somebody who emotionally exploits you is really, they are into, they want to control everything that you do. And um, it can come off as well-intentioned that this person really cares about you and they, they care about you and they want to take care of you. And but the thing about it is, 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 is really about control, right? Uh, they want to micromanage your life they, without asking how you feel about that or this or that. They want to tell you what to do and they want you to do exactly as they say. And if you do anything other than what they think or say or want, then they will isolate you. Um, they, they want you to be totally dependent on them. They will isolate you by either physically or emotionally, right? And because uh, they want you to be dependent on them. So they, again, it's power and control, right? Uh, um, and then, you know, if you're not really strong enough, you can, it can leave you questioning yourself. So how do you know that you're being emotionally abused? What are the feelings that you get? You basically, one of the feelings that you feel is that you find yourself scared of making any kind of decision that may anger the other person. The other thing you may feel is you, uh, you may do is not to question anything they say or do um, or give your opinions about anything. You're just basically like a dummy. You just sit there and let them do whatever it is that they want because you, are, you fear the repercussions of saying anything. <clears throat> You also accept everything they say as gospel because you're afraid of the repercussions. Um, you basically go along to get along. Uh, you fear going out in public with them because you don't know what they might do to insult you or make you feel in front, you know, less than in front of people. And you get anxious when they are around because you don't know what next, what is, what is going to happen next, right? So, I mentioned earlier that I'm going to speak about how the attachment ties, and I kind of touched on a little bit of it with the fearful avoidant earlier, because they are people please. You know, one of the core wounds is that is that they they look, they feel less than, so therefore they're going to please people so that they, people will like them, and so they can fall victim to. Usually, it's the dismissive avoidant who will be more in con, want to be in control of others, because. Um, they, the funny thing about this is that even though they want to be in control, this is a dismissive avoidance now, is that they will not, they will refuse to be controlled because especially if it is something to do, if you're criticizing them or wanting them to do something because they are not going to stand for criticism because that is one of their core wounds. So the anxious, uh, preoccupied and the fearful avoidant individuals, attachment style individuals, are those individuals who will more than likely be the victims of the uh, dismissive avoidant uh, attachment style when it comes to emotional abuse. Now, the, 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 um, the anxious, preoccupied, and the fearful avoidant can also par participate in, you know, be the perpetrators of emotional abuse, but it's for a different reason. It's not so much for... Um, it's not so much just to make you feel less than. It's more a power, it's a control thing in terms of they'll tell you something so that they can know where you are because they don't, they fear losing you. It's more out of fear than power and control. It's a kind of control too, but in, in, in terms of what they do to try and hold you close to them because they want to know where you are, what you're doing, and they are afraid of abandonment. So they will um, you know, say nasty things too. They will lash out. Fear, the fearful of what it will lash out when, you know, you um, do something and say nasty things as well. But usually that is, is in response to something someone said, not as a means of power and control. I hope I make some sense there uh, or that makes sense to you. So um, I hope you learned something from this uh, video, guys. And um, um, I, if you learn something, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And um, also, um, subscribe, yeah, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that whenever I upload new videos, you can be notified as well. All right, guys, so this is Christine from Leverage for Change Coaching and Consulting. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.